Hey, welcome to the town. Where will it be? Everybody and welcome to yet another episode of the Lowdown at the Down Low. It is a show where I, your host, Jason Braden, gets up close and personal with the multi-talented cast and crew of the audio series Heroes of Extinction. Today on the show, we have a very special guest who, as a child, warmed our hearts with a single word, but as an adult, is stepping into the limelight as a superhero, discovering her place in a world full of chaos. So please help me welcome the very talented, the very lovely Miss Mary Gibbs. Hello, Mary. How are you doing today? Hello, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for being on our show. Really appreciate your time today. Of course. So I had mentioned in my little intro about one word that you warmed our hearts with as a (laughs) child. Now, I know that's a little cryptic, but maybe you can kind of help explain to everybody the word I'm talking about and what your claim to fame was. This is boo after puberty, so I'm warning you guys. (laughs) Kitty! Yes, kitty! (laughs) That's the word. All right, so who is boo and who is kitty? Who is boo? Uh, Yeah, so boo, I was lucky enough to have a dad that uh, worked at Pixar and kind of fell into the role of being the voice of boo when I was uh, was two and a half to three and a half. Kitty is... is, uh, her probably her, her favorite companion, you know, there's also Mike Wazowski, but uh, also known as James P. Sullivan. But as a two-year-old, you know, he looked like a big kitty to me. So yeah, that's the... So summer. your dad worked for Pixar at the time. And what did he actually do? Yeah, so he was a storyboard artist for Disney and Pixar for over 30 years. Started wow. off at Cool World. I don't know if that was, I don't think that was Disney. But then when he switched over to Disney, Pocahontas was that one. Then he switched to Pixar, Toy Story, Bugs Life, Finding Nemo, Monsters, Inc., Wally, Cars. He, he, he put in a lot of uh, contributions to a lot of those movies. So so that's, I mean, it, there is a, a talented team behind Monsters, Inc. because I swear it's it's one of my favorite Pixar movies. I actually worked for a company who worked closely with Pixar when they went public to start trading to, um, you know, anybody who wanted to buy their stock. And we actually got the honor of having Steve Jobs at the time come Mm -hmm. in and look at the artwork for it and everything. So I have Uh, a little bit of a tie-in in in history with Pixar in a certain way, not necessarily the same as you had, obviously. Oh, that's that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Monsignic was cool too, because, you know, my dad, he was a storyboard artist. So that's in the rough phases of the movie. And Originally, I was just brought in to sketch and draw just so they can get a little girl's movements. And then as the movie progressed, they were like, well, let's just use her voice. But, you know, as the movie progressed in like the computer animation phase, Monsters, Inc. was really just special in the world of animation because even like that slow motion scene when all the monsters are walking in and every (laughs) I think it's like every individual hair of Sully's was actually animated. So there's like, you know, yeah, a lot of those like really cool breakthroughs. And, you know, one of the first times where they actually had like a, a little kid, me. Uh, voice a, a little kid, you know, so there was a lot of like cool uniqueness to the the movie. Probably. Yeah, I was a big behind the scenes nerd, still kind of am in a certain aspect. And I remember following how well computer animation was growing at the time. And I do remember the whole thing about them talking about how lifelike they were getting, you know, to animate hair and specifically on Sully. Because yeah. everything just moved and flowed like in real life. And it was what kind of helped bring him to life. And of course, Boo was just adorable. And, you know, she warmed our hearts at the very end of the movie. And it, but it wasn't just her saying kitty. It was when Sully's eyes just sort of lit up when he yeah. got to see her again after the door was reconstructed. So and it fades to black and everyone's left to wonder what happened next. I know. <laughs> and I'm so now happy. Who's, yeah. who's the superhero I'm, next? That's the sequel. Yes. Yes. I'm so <laughs> yeah. happy that there was a sequel to Monsters Inc., but it's more of a prequel. I just yeah. wish there was something that kind of brought us back to the more modern day world to finish up that interaction between yeah, Sully and Yeah, I agree. Boo. I remember, so when Monsters at Work was being worked on, and uh, my dad was actually um, on the crew for a little bit of that, and they were debating even in that show, like, should we bring Boo back? And at the time, you know, I'm not sure if this will change in the future, but Pete Doctor, the director of uh, Monsters, Inc., he was saying, like, how in that, that end scene you, you do, you know, you see Sully's eyes lit up, like we were talking about, you hear Boo's voice. And then it fades and, and he kind of wanted to keep the magic, I don't know, the magic alive for the audience to kind of like leave it up to them to think like what happened after this and, instead of just kind of like laying it all out in another movie. So that was the, the you know reason they didn't want to bring Boo back for at least the TV show. But who knows? I'm still still hoping Boo might come back in the future. But 
I can appreciate that from a like sort of artistic sort of point, you know, and, yeah. and it kind of keeps that emotion locked in with that one movie and they can create new moments with the sequel and, you know, Monsters University. And of course, like what you mentioned, Monsters at Work, which I, I think I still have a few episodes I have to watch now that you I said that. Yet. I need to. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's, yeah. it's, it was kind of exciting because you got like this new monster that comes into the world of Monsters, Inc. He wants to be a scarer. He's trained his whole, you know, college career to be a scare. But when he goes to Monsters, Inc., they've changed to laughter. So oh, yeah. there's oh, no place for him. So yeah. they have to put him downstairs with the, the technical team who mm -hmm. are, you know, kind of like a ragtag bunch of people. They're kind of the underdogs that you want to root for and everything. And he learns, you know, that, well, now I have to figure out how not to be scary. Yeah. <laughs> so it's they, they did a really good job with the storyline. So what about life after boo i mean obviously there was monsters inc and i'm pretty sure your voice was also used for some video games here and there from the different clips they took but you probably had what just a normal childhood after that growing up you know right after i was, I was five when it came out because you know it takes you know six years to make a movie almost yeah so i was five when it came out and there was you know right right when it came out there was companies that were reaching out to my family Flintstones wanted me to be like Bam Bam or is that the, the kid? I don't know. Anyway, there was some Flintstone show, but they thought I was three still. So there's like, you know, there's that. I did like one audition for Santa Claus 2. I was going to be Tim Allen's niece. Uh, and I actually made that role. But then they found out like a seven year old. I was seven at the time. Like seven year old couldn't work as many hours as a, a nine year old. So there's like a little, you know, but ultimately, like my parents pulled me out of it. It was like for, for that audition specifically, I walked in, there was a bunch of like pageant girls essentially which is not, nothing wrong with that but like you know I just came from Disneyland and I had a big stain down my flannel shirt and like <laughs> we, we kind of realized like okay this world isn't for us so yeah gratefully got taken out of it and you know just put in public school and you know, lived the, the normal life I guess uh as normal as it gets but yeah yeah so I, I'm grateful for that I think like you know I loved musical theater and stuff growing up and then it was never a big part of me that was like oh, I want to be like famous and being more roles. I was always comfortable with like saying, you know, the amount of fame, you know, if one called that was great about, about being a child voice actress. No one recognizes you if you don't want them to. But I always said like, you know, the little amount of fame that I have, that was, you know, uh, that was sometimes too much. So I, I think it was a uh, definitely a good route to like, yeah, just take me out of it now. Um, now that like, you know, now I, I was approached a few, like four years ago, by my manager, Celeb Works about the, the whole world of Comic-Con. So that's kind of how I can like, keep, keep that alive. And I, I still, you know, I have a booth at comic cons where I meet people and I'll like sign things. So being able to do that is, is a cool little, uh, you know, tribute to, to Monsters Inc. But yeah, we'll, we'll circle back to that later because I want to talk about how you kind of came into the whole heroes of extinction world, because I mean, obviously that's what this show is about, but really quick, yeah. what is it you do nowadays? Nowadays, you're definitely not doing as much voice acting, although you are definitely a character in this show, which like yeah. I said, we'll get to, but you're doing something a little bit more kind of daring I, I should say uh with yourself nowadays yeah I'm 25 now when I was 18 I, I started teaching yoga so I was a little less or more tame uh started teaching yoga and so I've always been in like in 2012 I got a 10 vertebrae spinal fusion from scoliosis and just learned Ooh. through that experience that like yoga and just like staying active is definitely the you know has got me to where I am today which you know I don't feel that limited by it so I started teaching yoga and uh, now I'm actually I want to get back into teaching since I, I've moved around a, a bit, but I'm in massage therapy school now. So that's kind of like my trajectory of, you know, in terms of a, a career or whatever, you know, getting sure, more sure. back into like holistic, you know, I, I'm in a holistic health practitioner program, it's called. So it's a thousand hours instead of the basic 600. And you could take, you know, I'm specializing in like herbalism and, and cupping and like traditional Chinese medicine techniques. And so learning all that. And then also, which I have the more daring, I got into, I really got into fire spinning a couple years ago. Yeah, and that's so, what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. So my, <laughs> my weapon of choice is a, a rope dart, traditionally a Chinese, uh, you know, martial arts weapon. Yeah, now I just spin it with a big ball of fire on the end. And actually, for, for a while, it was just for fun. And I mean, it still is for the most part. But uh, I had my first like actual performance. And that was with George the Giant. He, you know, he was in Big Fish. He's a sword swallower. He's seven four, and we had a at Knott's Berry Farm for their their not scary farm for for two months, November October. We got to perform together and had a whole sideshow act. Where I would spin spin my rope dart, and then 
you know, I would smash a cinder block over him while he was laying on a bed of nails. <laughs> and I, he taught me how to walk on glass. So, uh, yeah, I got a little taste of, of the circus world. My mom always told me I would run away and join the circus. So I'm on my way. <laughs> wow. And I'll it's just funny how moms food. know that stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I was always like, even before I got into the rope dart a couple years ago when I was in high school, I, uh, they're called like flow arts, I guess is like the general term. Like some people spin poi, which is like two balls at the end of a rope. Some people have a hula hoop, a rope dart, you know, different a staff, different things. I started with a hula hoop. And so even then, you know, I was like, I was doing a headstand with this hula hoop, like on my foot. And I think, you know, even with a metal rod in my spine, my mom was like, yep. Yeah. You're going to do something with that. <laughs> yeah, you've you've made a heck of a recovery. I, I actually watched, I think it's a video on YouTube that you had. Remind me what the title of it is. I can't yeah, remember. So I had like when I was actually, so I was in high school when I got it and I made this whole channel called The Scoliosis Diaries. And I'm pretty right. sure you can still go. But like I, I now I have a YouTube channel and I haven't made a video in a year. So bear with me. I I, I, I want to get back into that. But uh, yeah, I kind of wrapped it up. So Boo Grown Up, that's my that's the one right. I'm thinking yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I kind of took took the highlights of the whole scoliosis diaries and uh put it into like into one video and make it a little bit more uh digestible. But yeah, that 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 goes over my journey a little bit more um about that. But yeah, I definitely like again, I, I didn't go to physical therapy. I just really got really into yoga and just like moving my body and you know, stretching and strengthening and all that stuff. And like after three months, I did a handstand probably shouldn't have, but I, it was fine. <laughs> uh, I, I just, like you pointed out, just like the recovery was really fast. I was, you know, I was a junior in high school too, which helps me, you know, but yeah. Well, the recovery may have went fast, but you still went through a lot to recover from it. I mean, I, I, oh, I, yeah. I watched everything and I listened to what you were talking about and you actually filmed a lot of what was happening before and after surgeries. I did. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's essentially, you know, you have to kind of relearn to walk with this, you know, big metal rod in your spine. Like, you know, I, I kind of breezed over it and made that, made it seem easy. Oh, handstand three months later. But no, it was definitely like to get to that point. And I mean, the full recovery is, is really a full year. Like I couldn't run. Swimming was weird. Yeah. I mean, you have, you, your muscles are relearning or yeah. And like now they're straight and propped up by a metal rod. Like, yeah, it's definitely an early surgery. I have a scar from literally like neck to the bottom of my back. Like I was filleted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Physical therapy is, is no, f- I mean, I, I had a knee injury once a long time ago. I didn't even have to have surgery, but I had to have physical therapy for four weeks and that was more painful than the injury itself. Yeah, definitely the recovery, but yeah, I did go through that and I, I am glad, you know, there's parts of me that was like, you know, maybe I could have avoided the surgery by really getting into physical therapy or whatever beforehand. But the fact that like I went through that, And it's kind of like, that's kind of set me on my path of like wanting to help other people who've gone through that. Like even now with massage, it would be cool to, to work closely with um, like post-surgical patients or people that have scoliosis without surgery or like, you know, it kind of like, I don't know, there's different ways people say it, but like, you know, turning your trauma into like a triumph or like, you know, whatever, whatever you want to say, like what you've gone through, you could then use that to help other people. And like, everyone has their own, own thing. That's, that's definitely encouraging. So if anybody actually wants to learn more about Mary's recovery and her whole uh, journey through this boo grown up, just as a reminder, just search it on the web. I'm sure you'll find it, the videos just as quickly as I did. And I think, I think Jerry actually has them linked on theme park. Oh yeah, as well. he does. He does. Yeah. When I was, he was really supportive when I was pumping out those videos and I was doing them weekly and then just life happened, but I'm trying to, I, w- I would love to like, yeah, go back, but yeah, yeah they are on theme parkology. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. So Perfect time to segue back into where I said we'd catch up later. I am guessing because a lot of the people that I've interviewed so far have said that they've met Jerry through a convention one way or another. And I'm guessing that's how you guys met as well. Is that correct? Yeah, that's how I met both Jerry and C. Andrew Nelson. Yes, Uh, Andrew. Yes. Very, very critical uh, person in our little universe. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, but they're, they're both great. Um, you know, Jerry had his theme parkology booth set up and Andrew, I think I like, I met Jerry uh, and I met Andrew, I think in a, a few cons before I was approached by them. I definitely connected with Andrew on the fact that like, yes, he's one of the Darth Vader's. That's awesome. I love that. But he also did the special effects, a lot of the special effects in star Wars. And I geek out more on like, I, I like, I would love to learn more about like special effects and that whole world. So yeah, that was really cool. That's how I met them originally. And then, uh, yeah, I I think, I don't, I don't know how many comic cons. I definitely met them a few times before they they came up to me with it, with this opportunity, but, um, yeah, that was the, that was the end. 
was it Jerry or was it Andrew that said, I think we've got a great role for you. Would you be interested in playing a character in this series that we have? I remember Andrew being the one to reach out. I think just because I think I had his contact more. I don't know. But I know that they definitely both both talked about it. You know, if I, either one, even like say I was approached by both of them at the same time. When they approached me, I was like, you know, I'm I'm not an actress. Like I was like, you know, I was three. I think people assume that like, you know, because I was boo, I like grew up in acting classes and all this. So, um, but, but they both were like, no, but we like, we know you can do it. Like, you know, I think you're the perfect role. And so I, I think it was, it was cool. Cause all my life I was like, oh, you know, I always said, you know, I, I've met voice actors and some people are super persistent. No, that's what they want to do. They audition a bunch of times hear No, a bunch of times. And then finally hear a yes. And I know I wasn't like that kind of person, but I was always said if something if it fell into my lap, you know, kind of like how the, the first one, I was just kind of born into it, essentially. Yeah. So that's what's cool about going to the Comic Cons is that, you know, opportunities like this are are able to come up, you know, more people I meet. And so, yeah, I was approached definitely nervous at first, um, but, you know, both Jerry and Andrew are super supportive and Andrew is, as you know, Jerry's the producer, Andrew is the director, right? That's the official title. And the narrator. And the and narrator. narrator. Yeah. yeah. But they, you know, Andrew, when I work with him in the like studio, he's really good at getting me into the scene and like, yeah. So yeah, it was just, it was cool to have them like have some faith in me and it's cool to have this opportunity for sure. So you and I were actually at a, a convention recently at, down in Bakersfield. We went to the mouse con, I think it was in January at this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had our, this was the second panel that we'd had for heroes of extinction but I think the first panel that you were actually in for it, yeah. uh, the one we did previous to that was in Concord, both in California, for those who are who don't know where these locations are. But we had like a, a much bigger panel this time. And we had you, we had Isaac Singleton uh, on the panel as well. Of course, Jerry and Andrew were there. Josh was there and I was there. And you actually got Isaac. Now, now I don't know who if everybody knows who Isaac is, he's a big guy and he's an actor and he's been in um, several movies as just a, a, just a muscular frightening man that you just would not want to meet in a dark alley. (laughs) And he's got this really deep voice that is, is perfect for his character, but you got him to do something that I don't think anybody would have ever expected him to do. Can you remember what we did and what you you challenged him to do for that? We were talking about, people were asking about like different voices, I think that, you know, we've done. And I think he just mentioned, probably wasn't expecting anyone to comment on it. Maybe we're talking about me that I couldn't be the three-year-old voice. I don't know. I just remember challenging him. And again, you, his voice is super deep. You can, you would not expect him, but yeah, he, uh, remind me of the details. Was it a kid's voice? That he, or I think it was either a little kid's voice or like a grandma's voice yeah, or something yeah. like that. It was high something that was high pitched. Pitch. Yes. A, I was not expecting that. And it, yeah, he did it. And uh, it was, it was great. It was a good. It, it was a fantastic moment. Yeah. And, and I know we have it recorded. I'm hoping know, that, that we can get it on still. the site someday. Yeah. yeah. But it was fantastic. Cause I mean, here you are, you know, you're, challenging him to do this voice because I think he was the one that actually mentioned oh I can do different voices and things like that I can yeah, even I do like, a little kid's voice or something kid? yeah I was like yeah and you said well let's go ahead and hear it you know <laughs> and he actually it, it took him a while but I think he finally yeah. gave I it, he was like, it. Oh, I'm on the spot no yeah he did it yeah it everybody cool. went crazy it was it was fantastic so definitely sound more like a three-year-old than I can I, I got some work to do I think <laughs> so let's let's talk about your character. So on the show, you play a girl named Janessa, right? I do, yes. And she is somebody who is kind of recently discovering her powers. Is that right? She's kind of new to the superhero gig. She is, yeah. She's, you know, at first a little freaked out about these powers, but I think slowly, you know, getting more confident and honing them in. And I think it's a cool role for me because, you know, I'm 25, you know, I'm kind of in that. Hey, everyone's finding their self all their life. I know, but like, you know, I'm kind of, I definitely relate to Janessa the fact of like, you know, I've been going to like Krav Maga, which is like self-defense classes in like my actual life. And so I'm getting more confident with that. So I, I think there's a lot of parallels between me and Janessa. So it's, yeah, it's a, but yes, in, in the actual show, she is, uh, yeah, figuring out how powerful she actually is and, you know, how to use her powers to the you know best of her ability. Yeah. And what's interesting, you said that you're, you're learning self-defense and everything like that, but in the show, your character actually has a sensei, doesn't she? Exactly. Yeah. So I think, you know, like I was saying, there are a lot of parallels throughout our life, which it, it you know, it's cool because like when I, when I was boo, that was just my voice, you know, I, I wasn't necessarily voice acting like 
you know, Isaac, Isaac, or like so many, you know, actual, you know, voice actors, they can pull out all these voices. Right. I've been lucky to kind of have these roles of like, you know, it, Janessa, it's, it's my voice. Of course there is acting involved, you know, you have to, you have to conjure all these emotions in like this little booth by yourself. <laughs> so it's, mm-hmm. there's definitely, you know, there's acting to it, but it's, it's cool to, it, it, it helps me being like a, a newer voice actor technically of, of yeah. Having those, those similarities with the character because I could, it helps me actually like embody what's going on um, in the scene. So yeah, yeah. She does have a sensei. She's a, does training before she knows she's, you know, super, she's still like, just like, you know, this badass girl. Scene, so now uh, most of our superheroes in this story, they actually have like a superhero name. You know, we have true strike. Uh, we have the human blade. There's, 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 there's many others that I don't even have a list of right now. Now your character is just known as Janessa up until the very end. I, I wish I could actually say, but folks, I'm going to tell you that if you want to listen to the show eventually, which I'm hoping you do, you have to wait until the very end until we find out what her name is going to be. It, it's kind of discovered throughout the the hierarchy of the story. I mean, I, I know that that's, it's kind of played around here and there uh, from the beginning, almost all the way to the end, but tell me about your, your character. Like, why is she so important to, to Gabe true strike? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, true strike, I'm sure I could, I could say this, this is kind of what's known about, you know, here's our extinction. Just right. as he's getting older, he's losing his powers and he's kind of, you know, looking for someone else to, to, to mentor and like take o- take on that role. And so, you know, that he is Janessa's mentor. And so they have this, you know, cool relationship of, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's in the position of like passing down his knowledge of what, you know, of what he knows to, to the, the next generation of superheroes. So they definitely have some connections that go, go beyond that, you know, but probably have to listen to the listen to see how 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 she how she met true stark i guess right you, so her. your character is very critical and crucial because you know I, i'm pretty sure the, the like episode one it starts off with true strike it's 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 mostly about him and yeah. then you kind of come into the picture and you're introduced and we find out that yeah you know he needs to find a replacement and your character has got a lot of weight on her shoulders yeah yeah at first you know she doesn't know how to doesn't maybe necessarily know what's happening, you know, doesn't know how to channel like what's going on. Um, she's more like afraid of it than anything and her power. And so true strike really helps like mold her and like, you know, teach her, you know, how to, yeah, just mold her essentially and like help, you know, help guide, guide her. So it's, it's cool that they have that, that relationship throughout the, throughout the show. So coming into this particular run, now this is, is this the first voice acting that you've done since you were a little girl. Yes, this is. It's way harder than being followed around with a microphone. Uh, <laughs> but like I said, it's great to have you know people like Jerry and Andrew and I, you know the whole the whole cast super supportive. So, but yeah, it's it's cool to have people that are like, no, we we believe in you. I'm like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> so yeah, it's cool Dip, dipping my feet back into the world of voice acting. So. Yeah. And Andrew is a fantastic director. He's, he's not only helped you with, you know, your roles and coming into the whole voice acting thing. He directs everybody on the show and the the table reads that we've done. He's like, okay, that sounded good. But next time, why don't you sound a little bit differently this way? Try to think of this particular moment in your life and he'll actually make it seem like, okay, well, you know, I'm sure you have a moment you can relate to, like, say your boyfriend just got home and he found you um, like cheating on him or something like that, or, or you know, something oh, yeah. crazy like that, where you yeah. can pull an emotion from yourself, but into the role. And yeah. he, he does that in a way so perfectly to make you really change it to the way it needs to be tailored for the show. Yeah, I was going to bring that up, too, because that, that definitely really helps because, you know, you're alone in this booth, you know, he'll he'll read the lines and like, you know, do that, but like actually putting you into the scene and like like you said like maybe you know if she's if there's anger like in your voice that there has to be anger it's like okay yeah again what part are you like put yourself in this part of your life where like you actually were this angry and like you know yeah just actually getting you into that headspace so that that's a he's definitely a a good director fantastic director and kudos to you for like you know also growing like the rest of I me mean, this is the first time that I've ever done anything like this as well yeah. Yeah. I have no acting past you know I mean I I can act but is it as professional as like say what they do in Hollywood no definitely not but it's it's but so much fun way. yeah on. hey I mean we're all kind of on our way we're getting started for the very first time you know even if we don't have a lot of credentials under our under our belt and that's the great thing about this family of actors and cast members is that a lot of us are just starting off for the first time, you know, we're kind of 
raw into this. And mm-hmm. I'm really hoping that the following we get that I feel that we're going to get is, is going to be as big as what I've yeah. got in my mind anyway. I already think, I know, you know, I, all the comic cons I've been to or interviews, I always bring it up. Andrew, I, I, I it's, it's been cool to like be with it since the beginning and see how much it's gained steam and like to see like, yeah, just, I, I think it has like a ton of potential and I really see it, you know, I, the, the production value and, you know, Jerry's editing and everything, like with all the sounds, like it, it really does take you there. It's really like, it's really well done. And so, yeah, it's cool to be one, just a part of like a part of the projects, watch it grow. And then like watch ourselves grow throughout it. Like even like playing Janessa's role, you know, at the beginning, she's a, a less confident person. And so I, I think it kind of, again, parallels me in the sense where like, you know, at first I was maybe not as confident in the recording studio, but that kind of played to my benefit of like the more timid character. And then as she, you know, as, as I'm getting more confident, in the role, you know, she's getting more confident in herself. So it's kind of like, yeah, it is cool to see the, the the progression from beginning to end of just like, you know, the evolution of everyone's character is not just in the show, but like outside. Yeah. And people are just going to have to listen to find out how much of a badass you become at the very <laughs> end. <laughs> so let's talk about that a little bit. And because I know that we have a, a scene that we're going to set up and we're going to include with this interview and it, Remind me, can can you tell me what the scene is about? I know we talked about it earlier before the show. What is the scene that uh, we're going to be hearing soon? Yeah, so I love the scene because it's Janessa is you could really tell becoming more confident in who she is as a as a fighter essentially. And um, yeah, she essentially just got kidnapped. And um, Human Blade is another character that just s- tries to pick a fight with her, and and Janessa really stands her ground. And I think. This is probably one of the more pivotal points where she's like, oh, wow, I, I can do this. I am stepping into this role. So. All right, cool. Can't wait to hear it. Um, Human Blade played by Laura Oliver, another one who I've had the pleasure of interviewing. Can't mm-hmm. wait to hear it. Let's roll the clip. Hey, Mac, how about you blow this thing open and we collect our payday? What fat ass payday coming up? Mac opens a small black case and begins to wire the back of the truck with explosives. A loud clatter from up the mouth of the alley catches the attention of the leader, Chris. He looks at Mac and nods for him to continue before walking around toward the front of the truck. Keep going. Hey, everything all right up there? Chris sees Seth and Kyle walking toward him with a young woman at gunpoint. I thought I said no one walks through the alley. She slipped by. I didn't even see her until it was too late. Chris waves them back, and they bring the hostage to the rear of the truck. What's your name? Wouldn't you like to know? Seth grabs her ponytail and tugs it hard. He smashes his gun into her back. Answer the question. Janessa, okay? My name's Janessa. Well, Janessa, you look like a nice person. What's a nice girl like you doing in a deserted alleyway like this? Go to hell. She says she was taking a shortcut to work. Janessa headbutts Kyle with the back of her head. (laughs) Kyle releases her, but Seth is there with his gun at the ready. Don't move. Aren't you feisty? Didn't your mom ever teach you not to take shortcuts? I wouldn't know. She died when I was a baby. Chris takes his gun out and strokes it along Janessa's cheek. Janessa presses her lips together into a smile. What are you smiling about? I'm just thinking about how good it's going to feel to kick your ass. Unless, of course, you let me go. Then I would totally consider not doing it. I mean, I still would, but I'd consider it. Wow, great clip. That was really awesome. I mean, um, I've said this many times before. I am really hyped about this show because there's, even though it's not a video show, it's not, it's, it's not animated, it's not something you can watch on a screen, it's audio only. It makes you use your imagination a lot. And you can, you can totally picture the way that everybody threw everything together, what's happening, how it's happening. Andrew does a great job describing things. The actors come together very cohesively. And and what's crazy. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. This has been through a pandemic and we're all doing these things from remote locations, sending our files on a local drive. And then they're putting it all together. Yeah. Like, in one spot from all these different locations around the world. Yeah, it is cool how we could all, you know, especially, you know, COVID threw a wrench through a lot of things, but it's cool to have, you know, we've been doing this project all throughout that because, yeah, we can do it remotely. And yeah, the, the audio show, it's really, it's really cool. It's like uh, back in the, the old days with like radio shows. And, you know, I, I, 
I'd want to say kind of like an audiobook, but it's way more exciting than an audiobook. Like with the whole, yeah, you're, I mean, you're talking about it, but like all the sound effects and just how it's, yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, really well put together. And then, yeah, I definitely help with like, you have to use your imagination, which it's, uh, but it's easy to do with that because it really draws you into the scene. Like, yeah, I think it's a really cool platform. For sure. And we've actually, in, in a couple of the other interviews that we've done before, we have talked about the fact that it's kind of like the old radio shows mm -hmm. that they used to have to listen to when there wasn't television around because that was the only means of broadcasting media was through the radio. Yeah. So this is something that we think that a lot of people are going to be excited for and that it's, it's going to be great because they don't have to sit down and watch it in front of a TV. They can listen to it in their car. They can mm -hmm. go out for a walk, you know, while they're just, you know, lounging out by the pool or something like yeah. that. It can be taken anywhere. And I think that that's exciting. And it'll get people, uh, you know, wanting more for that because it's more portable media. Yeah, yeah no, I agree. I agree. So there's a lot of stuff happening and I know, and if, if Jerry was here right now, he would say there's so much going on with this show. And then and we got these other shows. I know he's got this one that's called Rodella McPherson that's set back in the thirties. We have another superhero show called Extinguished Worlds. Would you be interested, like if Jerry or Andrew approached you and said, Hey, we've got this perfect role. We think that we'd love you to be a part of, would you be interested in doing something like this again? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely would. I think, uh, you know, voice acting is definitely a lot harder, of course, than, like I said, being followed around with a microphone. But I'm really, I'm loving the, you know, both like working with Andrew and Jerry. And I would love to do another one. Yes, to answer your question. Um, there was another one. I forget. I forget what it was. But a while ago, Jerry was like, oh, I see you as a potential role in this one. So, yeah, we'll see what happens in the future with this. But I'll yeah, there's there's lots of projects. And I lots of things that I wish I could just give away right now that I I'm kind of privy to but I'm not allowed to say anything right now but yeah. there's just there's just some exciting things happening and the the future looks bright for this story and the ones that are to come mm -hmm. so anything that you would like to plug for yourself like anything about your yoga or a personal website Instagram YouTube page I know we talked about them earlier but if you wanted to give out the URLs for people to log in and check you out now's the yeah. time yeah. So the YouTube again, that was boo grown up. I have a good handful of videos on there. You can get to know me a little bit more. I, I will release some more. I think it's YouTube slash boo grown up. Is that how it does it? I don't know. I, if you Google boo grown up or again, on my Instagram, that's visual boo, no underscores, no nothing. And I have a link tree to, to the YouTube and stuff. I am working on slowly, but surely kind of like a monsters Inc influence clothing line you know I can't do anything too direct just for copyright issues but you know I, I do like you know I like designing things and um, yeah so that's kind of slowly in the works but the biggest thing is just to follow me on Instagram again visual boo and I always I'm posting about what I'm doing or you know if a fire if I have a fire spinning gig I think we're going to get that again in Asbury Farm I'll be posting about that or yeah that's definitely the most uh the best way to uh stay stay up with me so that's fantastic. So if you guys have heard all that and you want to check her out, follow those links, check out our Instagram, check out the Boo Grown Up uh, YouTube channel to find out more about Mary. And I do believe that we have a new Heroes of Extinction website in development. And of course, your biography and profile will be a part of that as well, mm -hmm. along with all the other actors. So. All right, that's it. I think that's about all the time we have for today, everybody. Um, I would like to once again thank our guest, Mary Gibbs, for taking the time out of her very busy day to talk to us. Mary, it was a pleasure getting to know you a little better and to talk to you again. Yeah, it was. I'm glad we made it happen. You know, I was supposed to definitely. To today, but I'm glad, I'm glad we still made <laughs> I know it, it took a few times, but we made it happen. Uh, it, yeah, right, yeah, it, it, it all came together. And, uh, yeah, no, it was. It was definitely a good to be here. So not good a problem. Yeah, definitely a pleasure. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Once again, this is Jason Braden, your host, signing off and hoping you'll come back for another episode of The Lowdown at the Download. Ciao. All great stories begin with adventurous ideas.